I made a determination of where I wanted it, and I'm going to put it up above this cut-in box for the electrical, and I'm going to put it right up there. Is there a right or wrong place to put telephone jacks? Not really. You don't have to have it exactly um, in line with the telephone jack from left to right or anything like that. And I don't know if you saw how I located a stud from before, but if you, let's say if you don't have a cutting box, you don't know where a stud is, and if you don't have a stud finder, you could, you could poke with your, with your hand, and when it's hollow, you know it's a bay between, joint, between two by fours. Hear how low that is? Now, now listen. That's right where a stud is in the wall. Then I know this is blank here, and the bay goes straight up, and it's right in line with the, with the telephone jack up above. So you've got to make it in line with the telephone jack anyways, within that bay. So if you've got from left to right, if you've got eight or nine inches to the right of that before a stud, then, then from that stud over to the left, you've got 16 inches. So it doesn't have to be minute in the exact same spot as long as you're within that stud bay to make it easy so if there was something in your way you could slide it over so that you're in that same stud bay because I know that wire goes straight down and it's right down in there because when I installed that cut in box I saw it and I felt it and I know it's coming straight down and I saw that the wires were facing down I kind of pulled on them too and all that so I've already done all my little inspections so I know that once I cut this hole, once I cut that hole up there, there'll be the wire right there and I'll be able to drop this straight down. I can drop that straight down. You know, this whole box, this whole little end, I can slip it in there and shove it down. Now this, this is an exterior wall. If you saw that, you thought, hey Joe, you're on an exterior wall, what's the deal? Isn't there insulation in that wall? Well, this, this house was built 50 years ago, and guess what? There's no insulation in these exterior walls. Now, if there was, I could fish a wire up there and then attach it to that and tape it on there and kind of pull it on the face of the insulation up against the sheetrock and still slip it down there. So there's ways to still get it down because I'm only, I'm only dropping it down a couple feet. Okay. Okay, so now I just have to cut that hole out. And what are you going to use when you do that? You're going to use your trusty sheetrock saw. And I've had this one. Well, actually, my pops has had this one for years. And it doesn't matter if it's perfectly sharp. In fact, you don't want it 100% super sharp at all. You don't have to ever worry about that. If you get a brand new one, fine. But if you've got one that's 10 years old, that'll work too. But just be careful as you're cutting that in. And it doesn't have to be perfect on the first go. Because I had to measure that with my tape measure and stuff. With the cut-in box, I could flip it upside down and put it there and mark around. But with this, you can't. Because it's, the edge is not big enough. So I had to measure that and cut it out and trim it off you know a little bit and then before you get ready just make sure it fits okay I got it fitting there now and it took me a little bit of time just to kind of trim off the edges a little bit and I don't like to make it overly big because on the edges there's only so much at the top that that cover the top and bottom that this cover is going to go over the sheetrock. So if you're not watching it and you're not careful, you might make the hole way too big and then maybe your cut in barely catches the sheetrock at all and you have to raise it up and split the difference and hold your mouth just right as you're tightening everything up. Okay. Now I can reach in there and see right now you don't see anything, but let's see here, here's the here's the telephone wire right here. But as I'm reaching back in there, I'm not, I'm not feeling the other wire because up here there was two wires, like they spliced on. See, the one I'm feeling is this one here. 
I'm not feeling this one, but that's going down too, and it feels like it, there's plenty of room. So when I shove this down the wall, I'm hoping that white wire is not going across the stud bay this way or this way, and, if, and hopefully it's not short, because if it's not short, it's not going to fit in my box, is it? There wasn't really any way I could really figure that out beforehand. So, another reason why I guess it was good, I got that box up high. And plus, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be hidden underneath the desk. When you're walking around in the kitchen, you don't have to look under there and see the telephone wire hanging out or whatever. You know? Okay, so am I going to put this cut in, in right now? No. My next step, I've got to shimmy that down the wall. Let's see if we can't do this. So I'm just going to do a dry run to see what I have to do to slip that down. I'm going to kind of put it down like that. So I've got this wire here. I want to make sure it's out of my way. I'm going to make a little slit right here. Feel back in there, make sure I'm not hitting anything. Ah, it feels like I'm hitting. Oh, okay. There's a fire block right there. Yeah, that's why I can't go any higher than that. Okay, I, can't, I guess I could turn it this way and slide it down. Okay, so I got this other wire out of here. And that's why I don't like using a Sawzall or anything when I'm cutting, when I'm doing things like this. Because you could hit wires or whatever. So far, so good. I'm not hitting anything. Let's see what I can do here. Might have to. Uh, Might have to cut a little bit more out. Yeah. Probably a little bit more around there. I don't want to get too wild with my patch because I want to, I was going to um, maybe put some webbing tape over there. But my uncle, my pops is still out in the car, but my uncle had a really good idea. He's Mr. Inspector today. Yeah. And what were you saying about that hole? Well, you maybe move that switch, that plug in over there. Yeah. He had an idea. Now, see. This box is for the alarm pad, and ultimately it's going to go down below this cabinet to a new cut-in box. And we we're like, okay, what's going to happen right here? We're going to have to patch that. But the other thought came, hey, what about just putting a cut-in box in here and putting another electrical outlet right here? Granted, it's a little bit higher than that one, but it's out in the wide open. It's above this desk, so if they have a calculator or something like that, if they just want to plug something in really quickly, they could. And it's not really going to be that much of an eyesore. If you have a plug, you could have a plug right, boom, right there. See? And I thought, hey, that's a pretty good idea, but look what we just came up across. There's a fire block right there. And... It's, it's like, how are we going to put that cut-in box in? If we put in a cut-in box, it is still possible to a certain extent. I could take this alarm keypad and lower it down a little bit, and then put the cut-in box from here down. And then when I put the cover plate on, the cover plate's not going to cover this up here. 
it's going to be about like that. This, this little area would still have to be patched a little bit, but it would be hardly visible at all. We could do a really good job with that. So that's, that's another option that, that we could have. If we didn't have that fire block, we just cut that out and put a cut in box in there and put a, put a plug in there. And the reason why we could put a plug is because I've got a cut in box down here, that one. And I just installed that and I've got to put a, an electrical outlet on there. I could re-pull that out of the wall because that's a cut in box. It's really simple to do. Add another wire from there and could doink fish it right up to there and power a, an electrical outlet there. So that's another option, okay, on how to patch that hole, what we're going to do with that. And incidentally, speaking of patching holes, after I cut, cut the hole out, Underneath the desk, I've got this little piece of sheetrock. Now, if you ever need to, to uh, match some paint or something, you can cut something out like that. You could take that to the store, and that's a big enough piece for a painting company or at a box store. They've got this little computer system. They take a picture of that, and they can match the paint. They've got enough room to put a little bit on there and dry it off, mix up another, put it there, look at it, look at the sheen, see what it is, and all that. So there's a tip for you if you ever need to match some paint. And even if you're not relocating uh, a telephone outlet or something, you could still put a cut-in box like that, you know, behind a TV, let's say, or, or in a closet uh, next to an electrical outlet or something. Cut it out, put a blank, you know, put the same, put the same type of, of little cut-in fixture, put that in the wall, put a blank plate over it, and voila. Now you've got a paint sample you could take to the store if that's your only option. There's a tip for you. Man, I didn't know I was going to talk about all kinds of stuff like that, doing a little patch like this, but you know what? That's the beauty of watching my different videos. I give you certain tips along the way that may not have anything to do with the title of whatever video you're watching. So may want to watch and peruse my channel just to get some tidbits for your knowledge and entertainment. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Looks like I still I'm still gonna have to cut a little bit more out. So with that in mind, put in a cut-in box. That's a possibility, but I don't want to overdo it here just in case we talk to the missus. Because you know what? She might override him. Yeah. She might not want a plug there. She might not want one. She might say that's good enough. We talked about patching the wall. She's all for that. So we've got a little bit of cajoling to do with her to see if she can change. We can change her mind tactfully. You know what I mean? Sometimes you gotta do. Sometimes you gotta do that. I don't mind patching that. I brought all my stuff to do that. In fact, that's why I was doing this one first, so I could patch this while I'm doing some other stuff here. Okay. So I'm gonna keep. Uh, I gotta. I gotta do a little bit more here. Okay. But you get the idea. Okay. So I'm gonna cut a little bit more and get ready to fish her down. 